This year, 25 years ago, the wall fell, November 9, 1989. From one day to the next, there was a whole new city to conquer. Hello, my, uh, my name is Sasha. I work as a bike guide and uh, social media manager for a company who does bike tours. I was born in West Berlin in uh, 1974. If you were born in the 70s, it was just normal. My Berlin just ended at the wall. I didn't even really had the feeling that this was the same city back then. Uh, we're uh, right at the borders between uh, the districts of uh, Kreuzberg on the, on the western bank of the river Spree and uh, Friedrichshain on the eastern bank. Uh, and the background is uh, the Oberbaumbrücke, kind of the, the unofficial symbol and probably one of the most photographed uh, sites in Berlin. Behind me on the bridge as well used to be a checkpoint and you can still see a lot of uh, leftovers uh, from, the, from the wall and the border construction. Berlin wouldn't be what it is today if not for what the, the separation of the city did. If you separate a country and put two totally distinct systems economically, politically on it, it takes a while until it grows together. 25 years is maybe one generation and I think that's what it took to finally make that happen. There's this saying, Berlin never is, it's always becoming. It's a city that, that accommodates a lot of different lifestyles. You got the, the posh fashion people, uh, you got the punks, you got the Spanish street artists juggling at, at the intersections, and, and Berlin is a home for everybody. I was a kid, I, I was 15 when the wall fell. The whole summer of 1989, the, the situation built up. I can remember that we were sitting at home and watching how more and more people came to the border. And at one point, my mother turns around, looks at me, hey, hey what are you doing here? So I called a few friends and then we, we went to the Brandenburg Gate just to, to see how it would all play out. And everyone can remember where he or she was on that, on that day. We're here at the official memorial for the Berlin Wall at Bernauer Straße. And this is the only place where both walls of no man's land are still left standing. After the foundation of the two, two German states in, in 1949, a lot of people kept running away. They started closing down the overland border between East and West Germany in the early 50s already. But they didn't have the guts to do that in Berlin because there were allied contracts prohibiting that. But that changed from one day to the next in uh, August 13th, 1961, when they closed the whole border in just one night using about 40,000 soldiers. So technically that's like one soldier every four meters around West Berlin. And there was not a single family that was not affected by, by the closing of this, of this border. What you see behind me is just a small part of the memorial. In total it's about 1.3, 1.4 kilometers long from here to Mauer Park. We will uh, cycle uphill and see that it uh, has a lot of different spaces and a lot of bit different styles. We're here at uh, Mauer Park, just a piece of no man's land that's been turned into a public park. And it's uh, such a famous spot for classical graffiti. This is about 130 meters long and um, that makes it one of the, the longest stretches of walls still left standing, even though it's just the back wall, the east-facing wall, which is not so easily recognizable for everyone because most people, probably not even the, the sprayers who come here, know that it's a part of uh, uh, the, the wall or the, the border structure. We'll go um, in, in the direction of, uh, of Friedrichshain, another East Berlin neighborhood, uh, and uh, on our way, uh, past the Karl Marx Allee, a famous street with a lot of uh, typically socialist architecture. Just the, the, sheer, the sheer scale of it, it, it reminds one of, of times long gone. The street is some 120 meters wide, so it's, it's a lot of unused space. 
but for the Russians, it was all about prestige. And this was their project, their answer to, to Paris Champs-Élysées. As we've seen, there's quite a lot uh, left from the, the, the East Germany time uh, in terms of architecture, but if you look at interior design, most of it is uh, pushed into museums. But uh, the hostel, which is behind me, is the exception to that rule. You can just book that uh, like any other hostel, but this is really a place where you can get the illusion of, of what everyday life in the GDR looked like. Obviously, you can't recreate the feeling, but at least the look and feel of the stuff the people have been using and the things they surrounded themselves with uh, can be experienced here. We're um, right across the river from the place we actually started on the site of Friedrichshain, the RAW Temple, or raw or for long Reichsbahn Ausbesserungswerk, a former workshop for the maintenance of, of trains and wagons, uh, which was closed down uh, two years after the wall came down in 1991. In a way, it, it reminds me a lot of Berlin in the 1990s. A whole city which you could conquer and explore and you could more or less do what you wanted. You just went to an empty place, got some, some beer boxes, put a plank on it, that was your bar. So this exciting time is a bit over, or it's gotten slower at least. Prenzlauer Berg is a, is a district where this whole gentrification process is more or less completed since it started really early here. So even in, in, in 1990, you had a lot of people moving in from the West. Back then, you could, you could really you could do what you want. And uh, at some point, the people have grown up. The houses, which were more or less in ruins when, when this whole process started, they were all renovated over the years, and now it's one of the poshest neighborhoods in Berlin. Lots of trees, nice bars, restaurants, everything, but the wild times in terms of, of, of clubbing and nightlife, they are more or less over. And I wanted to show you the building in my back, one of the few houses that hasn't been renovated in the last 20 years. And uh, back in uh, the 1990s, every single house looked like that. So for me, that's a, a strong reminder uh, to the time when the, when the wall fell. Maybe it would be a good idea to, to keep a few of these to remind uh, people of what it looked like. Um, you have a choice now. You can either, you know, move to Prenzlauer back if you can afford it, have a, a nice, quiet neighborhood with an ex exceptionally high standard of living, or you move uh, a bit further to the outskirts and uh, still find the wild and exciting uh, industrial charm that Berlin is so famous for. Hey guys! This is uh, the last stop of the tour. We are at Modersohnbrücke. It's just one of a couple of hundred bridges in Berlin. And uh, since a few years, people uh, took to the idea of just sitting on a bridge and watching the sunset and ending the day, have a beer with friends and just enjoy the quiet end of a day. Yeah, I hope the, you enjoyed uh, this movie as much as I did making it. And um, I'd like to welcome you to Berlin. Visit us, take a look around, spend some time, enjoy beautiful Berlin. Cheers.